Okay, I think I think we are live. And let me just mute this guy again here. Because I keep my iPad beside me so that I could see the questions that you sent to. Oh, I left my closet door open. Just a sec. Not that there's anything particularly secret in there, it just looks messy. So today I wanna to talk about where I am in my 90 day challenge. Uh, I'd be uh, interested in hearing where you all are in your 90 day challenge, some of the difficulties or successes or, or whatever. And I wanna talk about this, this the sort of the feeling that I have about my language learning when I'm learning a language, right now I'm learning two. And that is that, that, that learning the language is like putting the pieces of a jigsaw puzzle together. Uh, for those of you who are not English speakers, a jigsaw puzzle is a great big puzzle where when you start, there's nothing there. There's no picture, there's no image, there's no landscape or whatever it might be. And you have to pick these little pieces that have, you know, they've been cut out with a jigsaw and you slowly start to put them together. And the more pieces that you have, the clearer the big picture becomes, then the more you're able to pick up other pieces and see where they fit. And that's exactly how I feel. Uh, I'm gonna show you the lesson right now that I'm working on in Arabic. By the way, I typically spend the first half of the week on Arabic and the second half of the week on Persian. And uh, I'll show you my statistics. I have basically around 2,000 known words in Persian and around 8,000 known words in Arabic. And so today, um, or yesterday, I uh, was checking up my uh, podcasts, uh, Al Jazeera and France 24. France 24 had an interesting discussion with women from different parts of the world who were from different um, Arab countries, and they were all talking about the Women's Day, International Women's Day, and the status of women, and what has changed in different uh, Arab countries and so forth. So I decided to get this transcribed. It's about a 40 minute podcast. Get it transcribed using this sort of automatic transcription service. And I've been picking my way through the text and listening to the audio. And I find that I understand a lot of it, not enough to follow it, but lots of words, lots of expressions I understand. So little bits of the jigsaw puzzle are starting to come together. Um, I should point out that the transcript is not, because it's done by an automatic transcription service, it's not perfect. Certainly the punctuation is missing. It's not ideal, but it's it's all helps me get a grasp because ultimately, what I consider to be the most important sort of fundamental skill in language learning is listening comprehension. So this transcript, as imperfect as it is, helps me finish my jigsaw puzzle. The, the goal in the jigsaw puzzle is that I'll hear the language and it'll be meaning. That's what, what I'm hoping to get to. What's more, I know from experience that I will get there that it's only a matter of putting in the time. As sometimes, as frustrating as it may seem, going through the lesson in link, saving words, not remembering them, reviewing them, not remembering them, I know from experience that all I have to do is continue. That, you know, you can do a crossword puzzle and, and you may not be able to get all the answers. You may not be able to complete your jigsaw puzzle in a real jigsaw puzzle if it's very difficult. But with language learning, I will eventually get there. Eventually, everything will become clear to me. I know that it's just a matter of putting in the time. And that's why at Link, our statistics, you know, are so important because they track how much time, how much, you know, how much you're reading, how much you're listening. And if you do enough of it, eventually the jigsaw puzzle will become clear. And if you have solid listening comprehension, that means you have vocabulary. Because when I listen to my Arabic, I hear all the words now. I hear them clearly, but most of them I don't know. So uh, 
I, it, over time, as I hear them, these words in different contexts, and I see them and I review them, eventually I get to understand more and more of them. And as you know the surrounding words better, you're able, better able to remember or to identify those other words. But I hear it clearly. Now, let me just show you a little bit of what I'm doing, and then I will go to uh, your comments and questions. So, I am going to share this. Uh, here and uh, start to start screen share and uh, okay now presumably you are all looking at this oh one of the questions I had was from a person Joseph who is one of our uh, my you know regular here at these sessions and he asked me if I could check out his um, his uh, profile so hopefully, I, I must admit I had forgotten and then I just remembered, so I thought I would do it. So I go to the community here, where they have all of, you know, forum discussions and stuff like that. And I enter his, um, and hopefully this will turn up, out, turn up. Here we go, view all. And here he is. Uh, okay, so known words, last week. Uh, is not very strong. It's all a bunch of zeros. So I don't know what Joseph, maybe he's doing another, oh, maybe it's because it's not in Chinese. Maybe I have to move this to Chinese. Where are we in Chinese? There we go. Chinese, and, and here's Joseph. Uh, his, uh, now, let's see, that's me, so again, I have to go to the community. Pardon me, I should have done this ahead of time. So let's go there again. Now you learn. Uh, bum, 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 here. Now you learn. All right, that looks a little better. So, last week, he listened to 0.4 hours, which is less than, we can see here, links is close to, Known words is more than, so he's reviewing a lot of the words that he's already learned, converting them to known, presumably. Creating some links. No, no, he's, you know, he's going over words, presumably, while reading that he, uh, what do we say? All right, let's start from the beginning. More than anything, Joseph is reading, which is good. So 2,666 words of reading versus the target of 693. But the one that he falls down on is listening. And let's go here for the last month. 5.5 5 hours of listening. So lots of reading, which is good. So he's more than exceeding his goals in these other categories, but still falling behind in his uh, listening. Uh, here again, not very much listening. Now, if we compare that to me, so if I go to Arabic, the last month, I have, oh, I, but don't forget, I'm doing two languages. So I have, in the last month, hours of listening. But if I go to my uh, Farsi in the last, well, 60 hours of listening in the last three months, and in the last month, 17 hours of listening. So between the two languages, I have 27 hours of listening. And... Um, where are we here? And Joseph has only eight hours of listening in the, oh, in the last three months. In the last three months, that's not very much. So my recommendation to Joseph is continue doing what you're doing in terms of reading and reviewing, but put more emphasis into listening because as I said, I do believe the fundamental skill is listening comprehension. Listen to things that you can you have a chance of understanding. So. Again, let's review what I did. I took my my uh, my uh, audio from um, France 24 in Arabic, and I posted it to Vocomatic. Uh, I got this transcript. I mean, here's the text. Uh, there's a bunch of stuff they let you do. I don't bother with any of that. I just copy that and import it into Link. And so if I look at, oh, this is my, I should point out before I go to the Arabic, so I do half a, uh, I do the, the Farsi, and I just got a report from my Farsi conversation, which I have reviewed, 
I'm now working on these materials from Persian Online, which are excellent. But let me show you what I'm doing in Arabic. So, first of all, I do have my regular conversations with my tutor. I have one again at 11.15 with Dahlia, who's an excellent tutor. And, but the, uh, this France Vat Cat is where I have put my uh, imported uh, content from France Vat Cat, which I'm not allowed to share because I don't have the rights to it. We're trying to figure out some way that with automatic transcription, we could somehow have linked, scrape these podcasts and people would have to find their own transcripts or something. I don't know how best to do that. But if I look at this, uh, by the way, it says happy scribe because I went to two different transcription services. I wanted to see if they were different or not. But you'll see that I'm working my way through this. There are 367 blue words left. Uh, I have gone through this, uh, all of these pages yes. here, and they're now all in yellow and white. So you can see that the, the jigsaw puzzle is starting to come together. This doesn't mean that all these yellow words here are known to me. It only means that I have looked them up. Uh, some are paler yellow, which means I think I'm getting a better sense of them. Some remain dark yellow. Uh, and as, of course, as I progress, there will be more and more blue words, words that I haven't seen before and that I will convert to yellow and possibly some of them I will convert to white. And so this is this whole gradual process. And when I go through the whole thing, and I'll, I'll probably listen to this podcast snippets of it because it's 40 minutes long. So rarely do I listen for a solid 40 minutes, but if I'm on my bicycle or if I'm cleaning up, I'll give in 10, 15 minutes, different parts of it. And a lot of the vocabulary uh, repeats. Uh, um, and uh, it's just part of, and if I continue doing this for week after week after week, there will be fewer and fewer blue words. Even the yellow words will convert to white and slowly the jigsaw puzzle will become clearer. So with that, I'll get back to the regular screen uh, and I want to look at the questions that you have and uh, tell me how, what your experience is with the uh, language learning jigsaw puzzle. All right, now let me see what sort of things we have here. Okay, we'll go up to the top. Blah, 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 everyone else. Okay, here comes. Can we apply four volt in link with Firebug? What's up, my language learning family? Okay, find any sites that have good Chinese content. You can share. I don't know, it works well enough. Oh, uh, does your wife speak any languages? Would she be okay doing a multilingual video with you? Uh, the answer to the second question is no, <laughs> I'm sure. The answer to the first question is yes, she speaks English and Cantonese, both at more or less a native level. Uh, she speaks Japanese very well. She speaks Mandarin very well. She speaks uh, Spanish and Portuguese and French not as in-depth as I do, but when we were in South America, she was quite comfortable dealing with different situations in those languages. Uh, yes, one, at least one skeleton in the closet for sure. You lived in Japan for much longer than France, yet you say you speak better French than Japanese. Why is that? Well, several reasons. First of all, uh, we had French in school. So while I couldn't speak on leaving school, that's, it's in there or something, you know, whatever I did learn. But the second thing is, when I was in France, I was living in French. I was studying at uh, the university. I wrote all my exams in French. I did all my reading in French. I was totally immersed in French. When I lived in Japan, I lived there with my family. Uh, I worked in an office for much of the time where much of the communication was in English. So the, the intensity of my French experience was much greater. It's also true that languages that are structurally similar, 
uh, languages of the same uh, language family are generally easier. I am finding that, for example, with Persian, uh, I understand Arabic better because I have 8,000 words versus 2,000. But when it comes to speaking, I, uh, I think I find it easier to say things in Persian than in Arabic because everything about the structure, the flow is natural to me because it's essentially of the same language family as uh, other Indo-European languages that I know. Did you get confused learning such close languages at once? I don't know what the reference, which languages, but if it's Persian and Arabic, then there's no real confusion. They're structurally very different. Uh, there are a lot of Arabic loan words in Persian, which helps a lot, actually, even if they have a slightly different meaning sometimes. And since they're both written in the Arabic script, to the extent that I'm constantly reading the Arabic script, it's helping me in both because my brain is slowly getting more and more familiar with the Arabic script. Uh, if you were at an intermediate level or forced to choose between only listening and only reading, which would you choose to improve your level? I don't know why that would be a choice, uh, but I think I would read if I had to choose that because I find it very difficult to learn vocabulary just by listening. Uh, if I have a lesson and my teacher, you know, if I say, how do you say this? And my teacher gives that to me in Persian or Arabic, I have no chance of remembering it, none, zero. Uh, if then she writes that out in my report, here are the words that I tried to, you know, remember. Then if I read it and maybe review it, I have to see it. If I, can, if I have a combination of both of them, I have a chance of learning the words. So I think reading is, is more important for increasing vocabulary and listening is the uh, sort of best preparation for eventually speaking. Listening also gives you momentum for your reading because you have a sense of what the words are supposed to sound like and what's supposed to be the intonation of the language. So I wouldn't want to choose, but between the two, I'd pick reading. Uh, okay, my name is Munter and I'm from Iraq. I'd like to know, okay. What is the uh, website? Okay, there are two transcript websites that I have looked. There are undoubtedly more. If you Google automatic transcription, you'll find them. I use one called Vocalmatic, V-O-C-A-L-M-A-T-I-C, Vocalmatic, and the other one is Happy Scribe. In our office, Eric and my son Mark, they tried both of them and found that for Italian and Spanish, Happy Scribe was better. So, but you should find whichever one works best for you. Is it possible to read another language as comfortably as your own? after reading at least 10 million words. Well, I can't uh, comment on the 10 million words. Um, say that I read French as comfortably as English. I don't know how many words I've read in French. Uh, once you move into a different script, so for example, Cyrillic, you know, Russian or Ukrainian, I find it easier to read the Latin alphabet because I'm far more used to it. I've read far more in the Latin alphabet. So even reading Polish or Czech is easier than reading Russian or Ukrainian, even though I have read more in Russian and Ukrainian than I have in Polish or Czech. Uh, but Japanese, I mean, Chinese characters I read quite well. I've done so much reading in Chinese characters. I find it difficult to read Katakana because I haven't, you know, come across it very much. It's all a matter of, you know, when you say as comfortably as your own, I think the only question is read comfortably. Yeah. So, hi, Steve from Sun Lee. Hi, Steve. I'm wondering if you have any tips for learning Chinese through Link. And also, how do you tackle differences in sentence structures since you don't get them in Link? Uh, from Winston Churchill. Wilston Churchill. So, for uh, learning Chinese through Link, of course, I didn't learn my Chinese through Link, but I think I would have learned it better because you can easily look up words. Uh, when I was learning Chinese, either I had to use a Chinese dictionary, which is hopeless, and because you forget right away as soon as you look up a word, uh, or I had to rely on glossaries, and they were not necessarily, didn't necessarily reflect what I knew and didn't know. Uh, plus, at link, you have the, uh, the pinyin can show up. 
um, so, I mean, it's just a matter of, of the Chinese is no different than other languages. You have to read and listen a lot. Uh, the only additional thing with, with uh, Chinese is you may have to put additional effort into learning the characters, you know, aside from Link or in conjunction with uh, Link. So do a lot of listening and reading on Link, but then do have a deliberate program of reviewing the characters. How do you tackle differences in sentence structure? I don't understand that. Every language has different sentence structure. Uh, and you gradually get used to this sentence structure through a lot of listening and reading. And you should also get yourself some kind of a little grammar book, ideally one that has a lot of examples and a minimum amount of explanation and grammatical terms. That's how I learned Chinese. I focused on the patterns of the language. Uh, I still remember a Russian book I found that had you know 53 uh, patterns in Russian. So you just want to see these patterns, these sentence patterns. You don't remember it as you review it, but it does helps you a little bit if you're struggling with some of the patterns. Do you give importance to writing in your language learning? I mean, like other skills. Okay, when, this is from Khalifa Al-Halifa. When I learned, obviously with, with French and Chinese, I had to write a lot, French because I was in the French university system and in Chinese because that was one of the requirements of my exam. And I think writing is a good thing to do. But since then, I've been learning more for my own amusement. So, I mean, I don't write by hand in Japanese, not Korean, not Russian, not any Greek, any of these languages. Uh, I, if I write, I write on the computer. I can get a keyboard for that language. And uh, so I don't, and then I'm writing as if I'm speaking. So uh, I think it depends on your goals. If you have an academic goal or you want to work for a company, then you do have to uh, work on your writing and uh, writing is a good thing to do. I personally no longer do that, but I certainly did that for French and Chinese. Okay, the writing of Chinese is really not that hard. Mm, I, <laughs> I would disagree. It's not that it's hard, it takes a long time to learn the characters. Uh, okay, I'm doing a got a ton of work. My native language is Arabic, and I want to master German. Can you get fluent in Portuguese in six months if you already know Spanish? Absolutely, absolutely. However, you have to do a lot of listening and reading and you have to let go of your Spanish pronunciation. And uh, I find a lot of Spanish speakers have trouble with this. You have to just totally, you know, get into that Portuguese pronunciation because the words are so similar that you can just hang back and say them as if they're Spanish. Uh, and you have to, you know, you, and I have heard Spanish speakers on, you know, uh, these podcasts that I listen to and, and they would, some Portuguese person would interview, use a, interview a Spanish person who thought he was speaking Portuguese, but basically he was speaking Spanish and made the occasional, like he would say falar instead of hablar, fazer instead of hacer, but the rest of it was just Spanish. So the key for Spanish speakers is to totally immerse themselves project themselves into being a Portuguese speaker. But six months, absolutely, you can become fluent. Do you think if you split your learning of Arabic in a different way, such as switch every two weeks, it would make any difference? I don't know, but uh, I have decided to do it this way. I could experiment another time doing it a different way. Uh, the disadvantage is that just as I'm getting my teeth into something, I have to go to the other language. The advantage is that I'm not far enough. I, I don't leave it for two weeks. So. I forget less, and when I come back to it, I can pick it up more quickly. Uh, I'd have to experiment. I can't give you an answer to that. How many links do you make on average per day? Is there such a thing as too many links? I don't think there's such a thing as too many links. As to how many links I make a day, uh, if I look at my Arabic now, uh, if I go to my profile, I'll just have a look. I'm not going to switch over there as change screens or anything. But um, yeah, what is it? Last week, uh, links created is 675 in seven days. So that's 100 a day. That's quite a lot, actually. More than. Uh, in fact, I will, uh, I'll just quickly, because this is kind of interesting. Uh, this is a second here. 
if I go to so if you look at my profile here um, okay so last seven days and so you'll see that my uh, these are known words no I want to go to links created so you'll see how it sort of goes up and down. Uh, this is uh, during this period, 317, 195, and then of course down again, 195 a day, 45, 317. But of course it keeps on accumulating. This is for the last seven days. I could look at it for the last 30 days. And uh, basically this cumulative, increase is what is going to make sure that you get the jigsaw puzzle done and i know that in time in time in time if i look at my arabic over the last six months you know gradually gradually this was a period of great concentration in arabic just before i went to morocco but i have every confidence that i will eventually get there so let's just stop that uh, okay, it's great to see. Where is Steve? How many things? Sergey Sokolov. Hi, great to see you. In my opinion, one shouldn't underestimate the importance of writing because it helps activate passive vocabulary. What do you think? Hello from Russia. Hello, Russia. I agree with you. I agree with you. Uh, by the way, my big regret is in Russia, I only visited Moscow and St. Petersburg. I would love to go and see other parts of the country. Um, writing is tremendous. Tremendously important. It's a great way to activate your passive vocabulary because you have more time. Uh, you can also look up aspects of the grammar if you're in doubt while you're writing. It's a good preparation for speaking. The only problem is that it takes more time. And so depending on your goal and your patience and, and how thorough you are, uh, I tend to be somewhat lazy now. I'm retired. I'm a dilettante. I do what I want. And so I prefer, I'm more motivated now, for example, to read and listen about uh, the status of women in Arabic countries and learn words related to that. So that's what I choose to do. If I wanted to become a more accurate user of the Arabic language, I would write. So I agree with you, Sergey. writing is very important. How do you stay motivated when your parents don't support you in learning languages? Uh, you know, do you really need your parents to motivate you, uh, you know, uh, when I was a kid, uh, I was interested in lots of things that my parents were not interested in. I liked playing hockey. My parents didn't play hockey. I think, you know, every person is an individual, independent human being. They have to find their own thing. The parents might be a source of motivation, uh, but they can they needn't be the only source of motivation. Okay, what are the corner of what you, what do you apply for solving the jigsaw puzzle? Okay, there's no solving the jigsaw puzzle easily. It's just this gradual getting into the language, allowing the brain to create new neural connections that enable you to control this new language because your brain is initially you know, by the time you're seven, it's kind of, or whatever the age is, it's formed around whatever your native or mother tongue is. And so you have to create these new control centers for new languages and it just takes time. I don't believe there's a real shortcut there. Uh, I want to enjoy the listening of materials, but I stop so frequently look at words. I don't get the whole banner from the text. What do you advise? Well, that's why when I'm listening, I just listen. Whatever I don't remember, I don't, or at least don't, don't know, don't understand, it just goes. It doesn't matter. Right now I'm listening to Arabic, I understand 20, 30%, but at least I know what they're talking about. But then I go and read and link, and that's where I look words up. And even there, I don't fret about whether I'm going to remember them. I don't try to nail anything down. I'm just, I know from experience that this combination of listening and linking and reviewing and reading and gradually more and more things will stick. I've been learning Japanese for about a year now, but I've only learned about 8, 800 kanji and still find it much harder to read than to listen. How many kanji do I need for everyday stuff? Uh, you need a lot of kanji, actually. Uh, at least the 2,000 toyo kanji. Uh, and unfortunately, the, the Japanese, depending on the context, use a lot more kanji. Than, the toyo kanji is sort of the prescribed, you know, 
basic level of kanji. Uh, so it's just something that you chip away at gradually. Uh, people, I, I enjoy what I'm doing in Arabic. I have no illusions. And in Persian, it's going to take me a year or two. I mean, I spent four or five years on Russian, enjoying Russian novels, listening to Russian audiobooks. Yeah, I'm enjoying it. So I'm not in any great hurry. And it eventually gets there. And, and you're never perfect, by the way. Uh, but when you, I have enough, say, of a background now in Russian that when I visit Ukraine the second half of May, and I'll be in the eastern part of Ukraine, Kiev, they all speak Russian, and my Russian will improve because I have this, this foundation of listening comprehension. And hopefully I'll gradually make fewer and fewer mistakes when speaking. Uh, I've been learning Japanese for Android. Uh, Steve, I've seen some people give advice when first learning French not to do any reading at first and focus on listening because the spelling versus pronunciation is so different. What do you think? No, I don't agree with that. Uh, I think that you have to get a uh, First of all, as I've said, I find reading is the best way to learn vocabulary. So I think you should combine listening with reading. Uh, what you have to do, though, and this applies not only to French, but to English for that matter, learn to make, to, not to connect the way it's written, with the way it's pronounced based on your own language. Uh, lots of people, you know, uh, I've used the example uh, with Anna in our office who pronounced sword, even though it's sword. So, uh, you know, word, sword, um, you know, herd, H-E-A-R-D, bird, B-I-R-D. We have to become aware of the fact that, that the words that we might in our own language pronounce some other way, we might pronounce bird as beard, beard, we might pronounce squirrel as squirrel, we might pronounce word as war. But we have to get used to the fact that, that this writing connects to this sound. And that's why I think it's important to combine listening and reading. Uh, what do you read in Al Jazeera, Middle East news? Uh, so uh, what I do in Al Jazeera and France 24, they have a variety of uh, podcasts. I can't remember. Uh, I can't remember what they're all. And uh, I have them. I go to them. I can't remember what they're all called. If I hear a, if they're on a subject of interest to me, then uh, and depending on whether I'm already working on something else, I may get it transcribed. This particular one was of interest because it helps too. Like if uh, some of them I get, they're talking about, you know, politics in Iraq or, or politics in Algeria. And I don't know anything about the parties in Iraq or the names of people and stuff. And so the context is, is too unfamiliar. That's why I chose this particular uh, podcast about the status of women in different Arabic countries because I understand some of the issues. I understand what they're talking about. And so if I can get something that's a little more familiar, it's easier for me to follow. So that's kind of a strategy for me to gradually expand my range of, of competence in Arabic. Hello from Tunisia. Okay, there's a woman from Tunisia on my, this podcast about the status of women in the workplace and stuff like that in Indonesia. Happy Scribe doesn't work for Arabic. It puts the words in the wrong order. Yes, but the strange thing is so Happy Scribes allows you to export it. So I exported it to a te text or something like that, editor. And when I copied that and put it into link, it was the right way around. This is a great mystery to me. I did it first with Vocalmatic. And then I said, I want to, because there was a few strange things. I said, well, test Happy Scribe. And of course, it shows up on their website the wrong way. But by the time I imported it into link, it was the right way around. So I thought I had actually made a mistake. And I did it again, and it happened again. So for some strange reason that I can't explain, even though it shows up on Happy Scribe's uh, website, uh, left to right, by the time I have copied it to a text editor and brought it into link, it's right to left. That's all I can say. Maybe I did something wrong. So hi from Kazakhstan. Hi, Kazakhstan. Hello, Brazil. Can you speak uh, Arab Arab Arabic? Yeah. La uh, Astatia. But uh, something like that. I'm working on it. Uh, could you recommend a good Japanese learning book, the one you use? I, <laughs> that's so long ago. 
I read, a, there was a whole series of readers by a guy called Naganuma that were all in Hiragana because I had the characters. I wanted to get the hang of Hiragana. Uh, one tremendous resource that I used and listened to, I don't know, 20, 30 times was uh, Showa no Kiroku. It was the history of the Showa era. Uh, I have books at home. I'm in Palm Springs. I, I really can't say, uh, actually. But any, they're all the same. Just get yourself a starter book and work at link and you'll get there. Can you give me a trick or technique to master Chinese? Uh, there is no trick or technique to master anything. You have to work on the characters and do a lot of listening and reading. Hi, Steve from Vietnam. Hi, Vietnam. Well, I enjoyed visiting your country. I was in Hanoi, went to Ha Long Bay, went up to the highlands. Friendly people. I remember sitting on the sidewalk on yeah, these little stools that are barely, you know, a foot off the ground, uh, eating my uh, excellent Vietnamese food. Uh, can you elaborate on what you call the gestation period when learning a language? Well, there is no gestation period, per se, but I have the feeling that, you know, there is, there is it takes a while for the, the language to gestate in your brain. So I have observed that if I study a language for a while and go away and come back to it, actually I'm better. So things are happening in the brain that are solidifying whatever you learn, or it's so at least so it seems to me. And similarly, if you say, okay, instead of spending six months to learn the language, I'm gonna learn it in three weeks by working 10 hours a day. You may find that actually there is this gestation period, which may be three months to, or six months, depending on the language, before these things are properly integrated in your brain, but I don't know. Uh, blah, blah, blah. Ay, ni hao, wo, ichi, chiro, fa. He, wo, ichi, chiro, fa, okay. Uh, go back here, yes. Geography and similarities of language. Uh, okay, now, geography and similarities of language matter. Uh, obviously, if you have anything, okay, so if we take Japanese, Chinese, Korean, uh, Japanese and Chinese are different language families, structurally different, but 50% of the vocabulary in Japanese comes from Chinese. So if you read Chinese characters, it makes it a lot easier to learn Japanese. Uh, Korean is related in terms of language families to Japanese. I don't find that that helps me so much. What helps me there again is that a lot of the vocabulary comes from Chinese. So to that extent, those language in Influences help. Loan words help. People fuss about false friends. I've never had, had felt that that was a problem. Real friend, false friend, anything that helps you remember the word is a good thing. Uh, geographic proximity is more, I think, a matter of uh, motivation. So I want to learn uh, Persian, Arabic, and Turkish because they're very much part of that historical, you know, part of the world. I may discover when I eventually get to Turkish that there are loan words there from Arabic. In fact, I, I know there are. I, I hear them say Merhaban on the Turkish serials, Netflix. How much will being fluent in Spanish help learn French? Will it have the time it takes to be fluent? Um, I can't say whether it makes cuts it in half. The vocabulary, you know, if you're an English speaker going into French, then it's like 50% of the words are similar. Uh, of similar sort of Latin French roots. Uh, if you are a Spanish speaker, it's 80% or more. Uh, the grammar is very similar, but of course it's different. Uh, some of the inherent difficulties of French, like the way the words, the liaison, where they flow into the next word, making it sometimes difficult to pick out where one or word ends and the next one begins, those are gonna be the same. But I think it makes it significantly easier because you have all of that vocabulary, but it's not a piece of cake. You still have to work hard at it. Okay, awesome. Uh, 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 yeah, let me know, by the way, BB, if that works with Happy Scribe. It worked for me. I I'm just wondering if I copied it to the wrong place and I've still got the original transcript. I just don't know. But that's what happened for me. And do you know the Japanese folks? Shiretoko Ryojo. Of course I know that song. I, that was my standard song 
uh, when I was, uh, you know, at the karaoke bar and I had to sing a song. Shire toko no misaki ni hamanasu no, etc. Uh, hi, Steve from London. Can you recommend some readings to learn Italian? Well, I, I, I have to tell you, I recommend Link. There's so much stuff in our, in our um, website, including content from language learning websites that make stuff available to us, and you can then go off to their website. Uh, I would, uh, you know, Google, Google whatever you're interested in, in Italian. Uh, yeah, that's all I can tell you. Hang on. For these words, I read. Uh, which language learn you know? That, I don't know what it means. I forgot to mention, but I, but. Oh, thank you. From Germany. All right, and I do I'd love to get back there too. Do you think it's a good idea at the beginning to learn the thousand most common words in a use in a new language? No, I don't, because the most common thousand of words are going to show up anyway. You'll you'll come across them if you just simply get started with, you know, whatever. Teach yourself, or uh, I recommend the mini stories in Link, where we did focus in those stories on the hundred most common verbs because you need those verbs to say something. Go, come, give, get, need, want. These were verbs, right? But other than that, uh, the thousand most common words are gonna show up, guaranteed. The problem is gonna be learning the less common words because they don't show up so often. So now, uh, do you think so? I think so, I'm not learning, but I can't say anything about it. Hey, Steve, can I help you learn Arabic? Okay, I thank you for all the offers to learn. People who want to help me in Arabic, help me in, in Persian. Uh, I have my tutor. I'm going to stay with the tutor in each of those languages. Uh, I do a lot of listening and reading. What would be great is to have at length some more intermediate content. So if people, not only in Persian and Arabic, but in any language, uh, typically conversations are easier. So if two people speak to each other, about their work day, their family life, their children, their what they did yesterday, what they want to do. And these get transcribed. And if the sound quality is good, that is excellent, excellent learning material. And if we can get more of that kind of material, particularly for languages like Arabic and Persian, then you know that's going to help our learners because the difficulty is to get from the sort of beginner stuff to the more advanced stuff that I'm working on right now, uh, like, uh, you know, Al Jazeera, France Mad Cat. Uh, I have interesting kind I want to read, but it is at 50% unknown words. I really want to read it, but I'm worried I'm overloading my brain with too many words. What do you think? I mean, it depends on your, you know, your, threshold of pain when I was learning Russian and uh, at a time when Link was much slower than today, I was uh, reading, uh, you know, Turgenia with 40, 50% unknown words and I was just fighting my way through it. The advantage is that I had the audiobook and the audiobook was very well done. So I could listen to it, even if I didn't understand, it was almost like music because it was so well done. So then I was quite happy to keep fighting my way through it. And of course, I, it was like short stories. Uh, short stories like, uh, and this was, I think it was Chekhov. Uh, was it Chekhov or was it Pushkin, the, uh, the station master? And uh, anyway, yeah, as long as if you have, if you, if, if, it's up to you. Do some, then go back to the easy stuff and go back to the more difficult stuff. In Spanish, why would you use the ah uh, in this sentence? Not this, oh, medical. One thing in, uh, in language learning is don't ask why. Figure out what they do and do it. There needn't be an explanation. Why is there in English that we we hear someone but we listen to someone? Why is it that we tell someone but we say to someone? No reason. That's just the way it is. Has your Russian given you a leg up to learn Czech? Of course, of course, because sixty percent of the vocabulary is identifiably the same. Hmm. Okay, are you familiar with Anki, blah, blah, blah? I don't do Anki because that's not where I want to spend my time. I want to spend my time with interesting content, things that I find interesting. So if I had eight hours a day to spend on language learning, I might do some Anki type activity. 
but I have an hour or two. A lot of it is listening. So that's where my focus is. Tror du att det är en bra idé att lära sig båda kantonesiska och andra i samtidigt om man är intresserad? Och det är det bättre att ta det i taget? Ja, ska vi studera både kantonesiska och mandarin på samma tid eller ta en av dem? You know, uh, I really don't know. I have always, so if we get back to the the jigsaw puzzle, if I were only doing Arabic right now, I would earn, learn Arabic faster. My jigsaw puzzle would be finished sooner. Um, I, 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 it's so difficult to say. Sometimes it can help to do them at the same time. I would go Mandarin first. I would go Mandarin first, but depends. Again, where your interest is, which is more important to you. You know what? In the end, I would experiment. I would experiment doing them both. And then if I find that uh, you're drawn to one more than to the other, then I would go and do that one. I guess that's the best answer I can give. How do you schedule your language study? Okay, so I have no schedule. I don't go to college. I don't work. I'm retired. Uh, typically, I will listen for... I'll get out of bed before my wife. I go out, I cut up some fruit, I prepare some porridge or whatever, get the coffee ready and stuff like that. 20 minutes or so, I might empty the dishwasher from the night before. 20 minutes, 30 minutes, I'm listening. Uh, then uh, I might have uh, you know, a session like now or a session with my tutor, uh, but I wanna work in some time reading. So I'll either get in a half hour or so or more in the morning, then we're off, we play golf, we go shopping, we meet with friends, whatever. And then in the evening, I like to get in maybe another half hour or so of reading and linking. And wherever I, if I go and work out at the gym, I will listen. If I have to go shopping and if my wife doesn't come with me, if I'm on my own, I listen. If I'm with my wife, I can't do that. So it's, it's all pretty well random. Uh, I second the request for intermediate material for Arabic. Yeah, please. Any of you out there who want to help. And even if you only want to give us the audio, uh, I can get it transcribed now, although it's better if you transcribe it because you can then control the accuracy of the transcription. Um, so, yeah, we would love to see more intermediate material for Arabic. Konnichiwa, thank you. Hi, Steve. I have moved from UK to Tenerife, but here they leave the S off a lot of words. Okay, yeah, uh, I know that, and that also happens happens in the southern part of Spain or in some parts of Latin America, uh, I would focus on the standard form of Spanish. Uh, and there's lots of content at link elsewhere on the internet. Even when I lived in Japan, I did a lot of listening on my own, lots and lots of listening. Uh, it's more difficult to rely on the locals to really learn the language. When you get to a certain level, you can then go and interact with the locals. And uh, you know, very quick, once you have a solid base in the language, you know enough of the context that the missing S's don't bother you. Uh, okay, how can you practice a language on a trip abroad when the people are coming to speak your native language, such as when traveling with family? Very good question. Uh, I had that experience traveling in Latin America with my wife. The only opportunity I had was sitting in the front seat of the taxi, because we were traveling with another couple so we were speaking English all the time. The only had time I had to practice Spanish or Portuguese was sitting in the front seat with the taxi driver. That's a problem. If you're on your own, you have more opportunity. That's why one shouldn't put too much sort of emphasis. Even say when, when I studied Czech for a year and then I went to Prague, I lined up people that I could speak to. Uh, people that I had had as tutors online, I made sure I had an hour with each every day. And then I was fortunate enough you know, I met with some link members and stuff. So I lined up four or five hours a day of speaking Czech. Otherwise, just to arrive and expect that you can find people to talk to is a bit unrealistic. Uh, how did you study the stationary man? I'm in the same position, the hard contents, and I have the, uh, the stationary man. I don't know what that is. Will you burn out or you study very hard in a language every day? Keep it interesting. Keep it interesting. Go with what motivates you. Um, and if you feel burned out, let it go for a couple of days. Hello from India. Hi, hi India. You know, I'm going to learn Hindi, I think, but I'm going to go. Uh, my strategy may be Persian, Turkish, and then with Persian, slide into Urdu and maybe do Urdu and Hindi at the same time, but that's in the future. Uh, is there any way we can share lessons that don't include audio? I've got lots of intermittent. Okay. 
uh, first of all, you can only share material for which you have the copyright. That's number one. If you have material for which you have the copyright or there is no copyright, if you can find a native speaker to record it, then you can share it. But the key issue is you can't share material for which you don't have the copyright. Finding it difficult to learn Saudi Arabic, can't find much media that isn't MSA. Yeah, the media is all MSA. Uh, if you can find some of your Saudi friends who will record material in Saudi Arabic, we will put it up at link. But we'll need audio and text. And we just put it in the Arabic uh, section. We have Levantine Arabic there. We have some Egyptian Arabic there. So uh, Iraqi Arabic, Saudi Arabic, whatever. If you can find people that'll uh, record themselves, we'll put it up. Uh, all right. Da, da, da. How long did it take you to learn Japanese after Chinese? And Link Support hasn't contacted me back from my email. Is there a phone number to call? Uh, no, there isn't a phone number, but uh, Eric is following this and he'll follow up with you. I don't know what the issue is, but we will follow up with you. I mean, how long did it take you to learn Japanese? Like, what does that mean? I was speaking within six months and after four or five years, I still had trouble following the television. Uh, so, you know, it's a gradual, gradual process. Can you learn three languages at the same time? I haven't tried it. I don't know. How many children have you got and do they study languages like you? From Mohammed. Yeah, I have two kids. They're 49 and 48. I have five grandchildren. Um, my uh, youngest son, Mark, is the basically the CEO of Link. He, he has done all of the conceptual work for Link. He coordinates our programmers. He does all of that. And he speaks, I would say, five languages. My older son lives in London, England, and he is not particularly interested in languages. Uh, our grandchildren have learned languages. Our three Canadian grandchildren went to French immersion. Uh, the two kids in London, uh, they get it at school, but they're not uh, crazy language learners like grandpa. Can you learn Chinese in one year with hard work? Yes, I feel that I did it. I did it in less than one year, but I was working seven hours a day. Okay, I'm going to stop it there. Uh, it's been great. And uh, you can, any additional questions, you can put them on the, uh, the YouTube uh, comment section. I will try to answer them. And Joseph, uh, I will find out why you didn't get an answer from Link Support. All right then. Bye for now.